Hello friends, welcome to To The Point. In today's session, we will be discussing about the later Vedic phase. So this is a phase from transition to state and social formation. The expansion of later Vedic phase, it was around 1000 to 600 BC. The history of the later Vedic period, it is based mainly on Vedic text and this was compiled after the age of Rig Veda. So the collections of Vedic hymns and mantras, they were known as Samhitas. So the Rig Veda Samhita, it is said to be very oldest Vedic text. So on the basis of which we have described a early Vedic age. And for the purpose of singing prayers of Rig Veda, they were set to certain tune and then it was modified and that collection it was known as Sama Veda Samhita. So in addition to Sama Veda, in post Rigvedic times, two other collections were composed and they were Ajur Veda and Atharva Veda Samhita. This Ajur Veda, it contains not only hymns but it also contains rituals. So this rituals it reflects a social and political milieu in which they arose. The Atharva Veda, it contains charms and spells to ward off evils and disease. The Vedic Samhitas, it were followed by the composition of a series of texts which are known as Brahmanas. So these are full of ritualistic formulae and it explains the social and religious aspect of rituals. All this later Vedic text, it was compiled in Upper Gangetic Basin around 1000 to 600 BC. So in this same period and in this same area, digging and exploration have been done. And nearly 500 sites inhabited for the first time. And they are called as painted graveware. In short, we call it as PGW sites. So we call it them as PGW sites because they were inhabited by the people who used earthen bowls and dishes that is made of painted grey pottery and they also used iron weapons. So with the archaeological evidence with the combined features of later Vedic text and PGW iron phase we can form an idea of the life of people in the first half of the first millennium BC in western Uttar Pradesh and the adjoining areas of Punjab, Haryana and Rajasthan. So the text it shows that the Aryans expanded from Punjab over the whole of western Uttar Pradesh covered by Ganga Emuna Dobe. The Bharatas and Purus these are the two major tribes and combinedly they formed a Kuru people. So initially, this people, they lived between the river Saraswati and Drishadvati. It was just on the fringe of the dope. And this Kurus, they soon occupied Delhi and the upper portion of the dope. And they called those areas as Kurukshetra, which is also known as the land of Kurus. So this Kurus, they merged with a people called Panchalas and this people they occupied the middle portion of the dobe and the authority of Kuru Panchala people it spread all over Delhi and the upper and middle parts of the dobe. The people of Kurus combinedly with the people of Panchalas they set up their capital at Hastinapur which is situated in the district of Mirut. So the history of Kuru tribe it is very important in the battle of Bharata. So and this was the main theme for the great epic called Mahabharata. And this war, it was supposed to have fought around 950 BC. And it was fought between Kauravas and Pandavas. This both, they belonged to the Kuru clan, And as a result, Practically the whole of the Kuru clan it was wiped out. 
this panchala kingdom which covered the modern districts of bareilly baudan and farukabad is famous for its philosopher kings and brahmana theologians in the western uttar pradesh the people used pots of ochre or red color and copper implements have been found archaeologists also encountered a thin habitants of some people using black and red ware the vedic people they succeeded in the second phase of their expansion because they used iron weapons and horse drawn chariots the painted grey ware iron face culture and later vedic economy so from around 1000 bc iron was used in gandhara so gandhara it is an area in pakistan and iron implements was buried with dead bodies and it have been discovered in good numbers so excavations show that the iron weapons such as arrow heads and spear heads it was commonly used in western part of uttar pradesh about 800 bc the iron axe it was used to clear up the forest in the upper gangetic basin and towards the end of vedic period knowledge of iron it spread in eastern uttar pradesh and videha iron implements have also been discovered in the area from the 7th century bc and metal itself this iron metal itself was called as shama or krishna ayas agriculture was the chief means of livelihood of the later vedic people and later vedic text it speaks of 6 8 12 and even 24 oxen that was yoked to the plow and plowing it was done with the help of wooden plowshare the satapatha brahmana it speaks at the length about the plowing rituals and according to ancient legends janaka the king of videha and the father of sita they lent his hand to the plow and in those days even kings and princes they did not hesitate to take to a manual labor like balaram the brother of krishna he is called haladara which means wielder of the plow for the first time the vedic people they came to acquainted with rice in the dope and it is called brihi rice was called brihi in vedic text and it remains recovered from hastinapur the use of rice is recommended in rituals but that of wheat it was very rarely used and various kinds of lentils were also produced by the later vedic people the vedic people they have they may have used the copper mines of ketri in rajasthan and in any case copper was one of the first metals to be used by vedic people and the copper objects have been found in painted grey ware sites and they were mainly for war and hunting and this copper they were also used as ornaments weaving was continued to women but it was practiced on a wide scale leather work pottery and carpenters work it made a great progress the later vedic people they were acquainted with four types of pottery black and red black and red ware pottery the second is black slipped ware and the third is painted grey ware and the fourth is red ware so this last type the red ware type of pottery it was most popular with them and it was found almost all over the western uttar pradesh and the most distinctive property of the period is known as painted grey ware so this painted grey ware it consists of bowls and dishes which were used either for rituals or for eating or for both so but the glass hoards and bangles which were found in pgw painted grey ware layers they were used and considered to be as a prestige objects by a few persons 
agriculture and various crafts it enabled the later vedic people to lead a settled life hastinapur and kausambi can be regarded as the primitive towns that belong to the end of vedic period and they may be called proto urban areas or proto urban sites the vedic texts they also refer to the seas and sea oages and this suggest some kind of commerce which may have been stimulated by the rise of new arts and crafts so on the whole this later vedic people they registered a great advance in the material life of the people the pastoral and semi nomadic forms of living it were relegated to the background and agriculture we know agriculture became the primary source of livelihood and after agriculture the life became settled and sedentary supplemented by diverse arts and crafts the vedic people they started settling down permanently in the upper gangetic plains the peasants those who were living in the plains they produced enough to maintain themselves and they could also spare a marginal part of their produce for the support of princes and priest political organization so in the later vedic times a popular assemblies lost in importance and royal powers increased at their cost the vidatha this was completely disappeared the sabha and samiti it continued to hold the ground but their character changed they came to be dominated by princes and rich nobles and women were not allowed to sit in sabha and this sabha it was dominated by nobles and brahmanas so the formation of wider kingdom it made the king more powerful and tribal authority it tended to become territorial princes ruled over tribes but their dominant tribes became identical with territories in the beginning each and every area it was named after the tribe which settled there but later on the tribal name became current as the territorial name for example at first panchala it was the name of people and then it became the name of a region the king's influence it was strengthened by rituals the king performed rajasya sacrifice and this it was supposed to confer supreme power on him the king also performed ashwamedha yaga which meant unquestioned control over an area in this the horse of the king used to run over uninterrupted areas if anyone caught that horse they should be ready for the battle suppose if that horse ran into other territory and that king he don't want to give his or her region at that time they used to wage a war holding this horse on their side so this was ashwamedha yaga if they are not ready to fight then they should sacrifice their region the lower level of administration it was possibly carried on by the village assemblies so this village assemblies they have control the chiefs of the dominant tribes and this assemblies were also interested with the trial of local cases social organization the later vedic society it came to be divided into four varnas and they are called brahmanas rajanyas who are also called as kshatriyas vaishyas and sudras so the growing cult of sacrifices it added to the power of brahmanas and in the beginning this brahmanas they were only one of the 16 classes of the priest but they gradually overshadowed the other priest this brahmanas they conducted rituals and sacrifices for their clients and for themselves and they also officiated at festivals associated with agricultural operations this brahmanas they prayed for the success of their patron in the war and in the written the king pledged not to do any harm to them sometimes these brahmanas they came into conflict with kshatriyas 
So, the Kshatriyas they represented the order of warrior nobles for the position of supremacy. But when the two upper orders had to deal with a lower orders, they made up their differences. And from the end of later Vedic period, it began to be emphasized that two should cooperate to rule over the rest of the society. The Vaishyas constituted to be the common people and they were assigned the producing functions like agriculture, cattle breeding and so on. And some of them even worked as artisans also. The Vaishyas, they appear to be the only tribute payers in later Vedic times. And the Kshatriyas, they are represented as living on tributes that are collected from Vaishyas. This, all the three higher Varnas shared a, one common feature. They were entitled to Upanayana, which, which is also called as investiture with sacred thread according to Vedic mantras. The fourth Varna, it was a very deprived class of the sacred thread ceremony and with this it began the imposition of disabilities on Shudras. According to Atharaya Brahmana, in relation to the prince, the Brahmanas is described as seeker of livelihood and an acceptor of gifts, but he is removable at will. A Vaishya he is called as tribute paying, who is meant for being beaten and to be oppressed at will. The worst position it was reserved for Shudras, and he is called the servant of another. He is called to be made to work at will by another, and he was beaten by the other. Certain sections of artisans like Ratakara or chariot maker, they enjoyed a high status and they were entitled to sacred thread ceremony. And therefore, even in the later Vedic times, Varna distinctions had not advanced very far. And in the family, we notice the increasing power of father, who could even disinherit his son. So, in princely families, the right of primogeniture, it was getting stronger and male ancestors came to be worshipped. Women were generally given a lower position. The institution called Gotra, it appeared in later Vedic times. And literally, this Gotra means the cow pen or the place where cattle belonging to the whole clan are kept. But in the later times, it signified a descent of from a common ancestor. And people began to practice Gotra exogamy. And no marriage could take place between persons belonging to same Gotra or having the same ancestors. Ashramas or four stages of life were not well established in Vedic times. And in the post Vedic text, we hear of four ashramas that of Brahmacharya or student. First one is Brahmacharya. Brahmacharya, which means student. And second one is Grihastha, which means householder. And third one is Vanaprastha or partial retirement. And the fourth one is Samyasa. This is complete retirement from the world. But only three phases are mentioned in later Vedic text. The fourth, it was not mentioned. God's rituals and philosophy. So, in the later Vedic period, the upper dough developed to be the cradle of Aryan culture. Under Brahminical influence, the whole of the Vedic literature, it seemed to have been compiled in this area. That is, in the land of Kuru Panchalas. The two outstanding Rig Vedic gods are Indra and Agni. They lost their former importance. On the other hand, Prajapati. 
Prajapati is said to be the creator who came to occupy the supreme position in the later Vedic period. And some of the other minor gods of Rig Vedic period, they also came to the forefront called Rudra. Rudra is god of animals and became the most important in later Vedic times. And Vishnu, he came to be conceived as a preserver and protector of the people. So in addition to this, some symbolic objects began to be worshipped and we notice signs of idolatry in later Vedic times. As society became divided into social classes such as Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras, some of the social orders came to have their own deities. Pushan, who was supposed to look after the cattle, they came to be regarded as God of Shudras. And in the age of Rig Veda, cattle rearing, it was a primary occupation of Aryans. The people worshipped gods for the same material reasons in this period as they did in early times. The mode of worship changed considerably and prayers continued to be recited, but this ceased to be the most dominant mode of placating the gods. Sacrifices became more important and they assumed both public and domestic character. Public sacrifices were involved and the king and the whole of the community, which was still in many cases, it was identical with the tribe and private sacrifices were performed by the individuals in their house because in this period the later Vedic people they led a settled life and, and they maintained a well established household. Sacrifices it involved the killing of animals on a large scale and especially with destruction of cattle wealth. The guest was known as Gogna or one who was fed on the cattle. These Brahmanas were only one of the 16 types of priests. The priest who officiated at sacrifices and they were rewarded generously and they were given dakshinas or gifts. The sacrifices were accompanied by the formulae which had to be carefully pronounced by sacrificer. The sacrificer was known as Ajmana or the performer of Yajna. So the famous Mahabharata battle which was fought between Kauravas and Pandavas it is attributed to this period and the predominantly pastoral society of early Vedic times it became agricultural in nature and the tribal pastoralists they came to be transformed into peasants who could maintain their chief with frequent tributes and chiefs grieved at the expense of tribal peasantry and handsomely they were rewarded the priest who supported their patrons against the common people called Vaishyas. And the Shudras were still a small serving order. The tribal society broke into a Varna divided society. but. Varna distinctions could not be carried too far. So in spite of the support of the Brahmanas, the Kshatriyas could not establish a state system. A state cannot be set up without a regular system of taxes and a professional army which again depends on taxes. So, but the existing mode of agriculture did not leave scope for taxes and tributes in sufficient measures. See you all in the next session with some other interesting topic. Thank you.